Papito the Potato and Spud, this is your great uncle Bobby from Honolulu, Hawaii, with your story time for today. Today's story is Toot and Puddle, Wish You Were Here by Holly Hobby. When Toot went off to Wilder's Brony Borneo, Opal came to Woodcock Pocket to keep her cousin Puddle company. What is Wilder's Borneo anyway, she asked. Puddle pointed to a green patch on Toot's globe. It's a jungle, Puddle said boiling with heat and coiling with snakes and swarming with bugs. Why does Toot want to go there? You know how Toot loves adventure. The wilder the better, and he has a passion for exotic plants. There are wild flowers and wild as Borneo that you can't see anywhere else in the world. I would love to discover an exotic plant someday, Opal said. Oh, look at them imagining all the plants and animals. Toot's first postcard arrived on the first day of May. Dear Putts, Wildest Bonio is so lush and steamy. I've met the wildest pigs on earth and I've found some of the wildest plants ever. You wouldn't believe the hairy indigo mud lily and the giant wandering moon bloom gave me goosebumps. Hope spring is bursting out in woodcock pocket. You're a pal toot. There are the other pigs, the wildest pigs in Borneo. Puddle wanted his flower garden this year to be more dazzling than ever. Let's put the marigolds right next to the zinnias. That would be perfect, Opal agreed. How could the hairy indigo muddily be more beautiful than a marigold? We're making the garden. Soon Puddle received another postcard splattered with mud. Dear Putz, we finally discovered the imperial quaking spice pot of wildest Borneo. Wish you were here, your buddy Toot. The next postcard didn't arrive for two weeks when the lilacs at Woodcock Pocket were beginning to bloom. Dear Putz, a bit of bad luck while exploring Great Green Swamp. I was stung by a pierce banded bush bee. Ouch! The stinging has given me a case of the violet virus, which makes you pretty woozy. Don't worry, I'll be a lot better once I get home and get some rest. Your friend Toot. Oh no, the bee, the bush bee. A week later, Toot returned to Woodcock Pocket. Holy moly, Puddle gasped. I'm not myself these days, Toot admitted wearily. You're definitely bluish, said Opal. Yes, Puddle agreed. You're a pale shade of blue. I have a violet virus, Toot muttered. That's the worst part of you. The worst part, you turn blue. So blue. How soon will you all be better, Opal asked. I don't know, Toot told her. I've never had it before. Opal and Puddle coddled Toot all day and into the night. Do you think you're feeling better, she asked. I'm not sure, Toot answered. In the morning, Toot still felt qualmish and queasy and off-color. How do I look now, he asked. I think you look a little better, Puddle ventured. Outside the bedroom, he asked Opal what she thought. I think he looks darker blue, she said. I really do. I know, Puddle confessed. Puddle consulted the well-known healer, Dr. Willie. The doctor wasn't familiar with Toot's ailment, but he recommended quarts of green tea and jars of evening primrose oil. That's what Dr. Willie recommends for everything, Puddle told Opal. Then he called Dr. Ha Song, hoping there might be a Chinese herbal remedy. Dr. Hong, ha Song was aware of the violet virus, but he didn't believe there was a way to cure it. A blue toot is not so bad, he said. The next day, Puddle and Opal prepared a special pink bath for Toot. He soaked in the tub all morning, but the special bath didn't help. Puddle had another idea. Maybe if they put their heads together and concentrated with all their might, they could wish Toot the violet virus. They sat in a circle and held hands and tightly closed their eyes. Everyone think pink, Puddle whispered. Let the violet, violet virus be gone. Opal was the first to open her eyes. It's not working, she said. Puddle was becoming discouraged. I guess we could all get used to Toot's new color, he said. There must be someone who knows something about this problem, Opal insisted. She stayed up late into the night learning about bees and hornets and stinging bugs on the world wide web. She read all she could about Wildest Borneo. Finally, in an obscure journal from England, she came upon an explorer who was an expert on the violet virus. He claimed the only possible hope was a tea made from a mushroom called the purple slime cap stinkhorn. And guess what, said Opal. The only place the purple slime cap stinkhorn is ever found is under very, very old bushes blooming with purple flowers. Puddle knew of a large clump of lilacs that grew in a nearby meadow. They must be at least a hundred years old, he said. Go look, cried Toot, and good luck. There they are, going to the purple lilac. 
Opal scrambled to them to stand up, and ancient lilacs crawling into the dark tangle was like an entering a cave. Lo and behold, shiny purplish stalks corkscrewed from the damp, leafy ground. They stink, Opal squealed excitedly. They definitely stink. Back in Woodcock Pocket, Puddle simmered the smelly mushrooms in a large pot for three hours. Purple slime cat stinkhorn's tea tastes awful, said Toot, crossing his eyes, but I think I already feel better. By morning, Toot was his natural pinkish color again and felt full of his usual vim and vigor. That evening, he was ready to celebrate. Hooray for the purple slime cat stinkhorn, cheered Toot, and for the smart Englishman, too, Opal added, and especially for Opal. Puddle pro said proudly, what would we have done without you? The next day, they decided they would investigate the deep woods close to home. They had explored Woodcock Pocket many times, yet they never knew what they might discover. And then one last letter to the wildest pigs of Borneo. Dear brothers and wildest Borneo, the complete rec I'm completely recovered from my bout of a violet virus, and just the other day, we came upon a pink-spotted star lily right in the wildest Woodcock Pocket. Wish you were here. Cheers, toot.